Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Have you heard about the recent discovery of the fascinating drawing that was carved into a rock in Japan more than 5,000 years ago? Yeah, that's right, you heard me correctly, 5,000 years ago. And what's even more intriguing about this drawing is that it depicts a rocket ship, just like the ones we imagined in the 20th century. Can you imagine that? 5,000 years ago, when, according to the official narrative, humans were still figuring out how to create fire and hunt for food, someone carved a drawing of a rocket ship into a rock. It's incredible to think about the level of technology and creativity that existed so long ago. The drawing was found in a cave in Japan, and experts tell us that it was created during the Jomon period, which lasted from around 14,000 BC to 300 BC. They say that the Jomon people were known for their pottery and for creating intricate designs using natural materials like shells and bones. So, how did they come up with the idea of a rocket ship? Well, we don't know for sure, but some so-called experts believe that it may have been inspired by the Jomon people's belief in shamanism. Shamanism is a religious practice in which people communicate with spirits or supernatural beings, and they believe that the rocket ship drawing may have been a representation of a shaman's journey to the stars. Others experts speculate that the drawing may have been created by an early explorer who witnessed a meteor or comet streaking across the sky and imagined it as a spaceship. Do you believe that? What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Let me tell you a little story about one of the most impressive structures in all of India. The Vijay Stam Tower, also known as the Tower of Victory, stands tall and proud at 37 meters high in the Chittorga Fort in Rajasthan. Now, you might be wondering how in the world could they build such an enormous tower with primitive tools. I mean, we've got all sorts of fancy machines and technology today, and yet we can't replicate the intricate carvings and detailed artwork that adorns the tower. It's a real mystery, but let me tell you, it's a testament to the ingenuity, sophistication and skill of the builders who constructed it. According to the official version, this tower was crafted with nothing more than hammers and chisels. Can you believe it? Those old-timey tools that we see in museums and think to ourselves, man, I'm glad I don't have to use those things. Scientists don't care whether it's done with a hammer and chisel or other primitive tools, what's important is that people accept the explanation that such tools must be used. And let me tell you, they didn't have the luxury of making mistakes either. One wrong move with a chisel, and the entire carving could be ruined. These days, even computer-controlled machines can't create something like this. No machine can carve such a fort with a tower out of stone. What do you think? You ever heard of Australia's Dreamtime Giants? Well, according to the indigenous beliefs down under, these were some massive hominids that roamed the continent long before the Aborigines even showed up. And get this, there's evidence of their existence all over the place. We're talking human footprints that date back 20,000 years, and even dinosaur tracks on Broome's Cable Beach. But let's get back to the giants. These bad boys left behind some serious relics. 
massive stone tools, giant molars, and footprints so big they got fossilized in the rocks. And check this out, in New South Wales, a fossil was found alongside some huge stone tools and hand axes that were so big they'd make even the strongest man today break a sweat just trying to lift them. The person who found it even thought the bones belonged to someone who could have been a whopping 12 feet tall. This discovery backs up the Aborigines' belief that these giant tool-wielding hominids were hanging around on the continent for thousands of years before anyone else. Pretty wild stuff, huh? Rogue Australian archaeologist Rex Gilroy writes about these mysterious Aussie giants in his 1995 book, Mysterious Australia. I found among other tools, a great club weighing 21 pounds, displaying a handle chipped out to form a gripping surface and thumb rest for a mighty hand, larger than any living man's. By now, I had not the slightest doubt that a race of giant hominids once occupied the Australian continent. Pondering these finds, I asked myself if these sites represented three tool-type developmental phases in the history of the race of giant men, or did they represent three distinct races of giants? Over the following months I numbered other sites, and at one of these, Site 5, I recovered a huge hand axe, 25 pounds in weight, which makes it the heaviest stone artifact yet found at Bathurst. Estimates for the actual size of these men range from 10 to 12 feet tall and over, weighing anything from 500 to 600 pounds or more. There were, however, even taller giants. From fossiliferous deposits north of Bed 3 Site 1, I excavated from a depth of 6 feet below the surface, a fossil lower back molar tooth, measuring 67 mm in length by 50 mm x 42 mm across the crown. From a reconstruction of the probable size of the original jaw from which this molar tooth came, we arrive at a complete jaw of approximately 42 cm in length, 36 cm wide, and with a depth of about 90 cm. The cranium must therefore have been 60 cm in length across the dome, by 21 cm depth. Thus, the complete skull must have been 110 cm depth, about 36 cm wide, and 60 cm in length. Of course, I wish my readers to regard these measurements as nothing more than suppositions. But, if my measurements are approximately correct, the enormous beast to whom this hypothetical skull belongs to would have been at least 25 feet tall, weighing well over 1,000 pounds. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.